The only two players who matter on this play are Paulson Adebo at cornerback and Jonathan Mingo at wide receiver. Mingo is running a double move route that lacks definition and explosiveness. That allows Adebo to easily stay on top of the route throughout, squeezing away his space towards the sideline and then turning with the vertical upfield. For Mingo to win from here, he needs to detach and show off a second gear of speed. He doesn't have that. Mingo losing this route shuts the Panthers offense down. The Saints played cover one robber with a linebacker over the middle underneath and a safety deep shaded to the far side of the field. All four of Bryce Young's other receivers are blanketed, and Mingo is the only one with space. The Saints have anchored their coverage off of that one-on-one -on -one matchup, expecting Adebo to shut Mingo down. Adebo obliged, so Young has no window to throw the ball into. He was under pressure in the pocket too, so the ball had to come out. 33-year-old Adam Thielen was the fastest receiver who started for the Panthers last season. Mingo and DJ Chark couldn't separate at any level unless a hard play fake or misdirection was involved. The Panthers also didn't have an athletic mismatch tight end, or even a running back who could create separation coming out of the backfield. So enter Deontay Johnson. Johnson has some concentration drop issues and was unhappy in Pittsburgh at times, but in terms of pure talent and athleticism, he's exactly what the Panthers offense needs. Let's start with this vertical route against the Cincinnati Bengals where he's in a similar position to Mingo previously. When the play begins, Johnson is too quick for the cornerback to touch him at the line of scrimmage. And then, critically, he raises his inside arm to prevent the defender from latching onto his body at the start of his route. This is what allows Johnson to maintain space outside as he advances upfield. By this stage of the route, the defender isn't beaten and is in a decent position, but you can see by his posture that he's chasing Johnson to stay level with him. This is where Johnson's speed has its greatest impact. As the defender tries to turn and look for the ball, Johnson goes into another gear to get on top of him, the gear that Mingo didn't have. Once he's there, he uses his inside hand again to prevent the cornerback from recovering at the catch point. This combination of speed and technical intelligence creates a window for the ball to arrive into. Johnson successfully stacked his route on top of the defender. For this same route against the Tennessee Titans, we're going to see Johnson use a jab step to the inside to create a clean release from the line of scrimmage against press man coverage. Johnson is so fast here that not only is the cornerback already beaten by this stage of the play and can't turn his head around, but the defender also hasn't actually touched him at all at any stage in the route. The ball is a little bit under thrown which brings the defender back into the catch point, but Johnson manoeuvres through that effortlessly to make the play. The Panthers, similar to the Steelers, aren't a vertical passing game. They still need speed obviously, but Johnson's value to Bryce Young will be felt more on opening up short and intermediate routes. This is a great play to show off the value of Johnson. The Seattle Seahawks show quarters coverage before the snap, so the middle of the field underneath should be a priority. The safety at the top of the screen rotates down aggressively at the snap. Mason Rudolph looks in that direction, and he should see his vertical receiver running into wide open space down the sideline, but Rudolph turns away from that open receiver and holds the ball instead. Luckily for him, Deontay Johnson began this play in the slot. Johnson runs a lateral double move as he opens up into a crossing route before planting his foot to turn back and run in the opposite direction. The defender covering him had no shot. It's important at this stage to note that this play was third and five. Johnson has given his quarterback a wide window to hit that will lead him across the first down line unopposed. But not only is Rudolph late to the throw, his ball placement leads Johnson back towards him rather than towards the first down line. This brings the defender back into the play. Johnson does a great job of recognizing the bad throw early and changing his body posture so he goes back through the ball instead of letting it come to him. That intelligence and awareness sets him up to evade the first tackle with his explosiveness and balance. Not only did he keep the Steelers offense on the field when they should have been setting up the punt, he added more yards after the catch by escaping to the sideline. We see him make the same play here against the Rams, but the route is inverted and it's against a defensive back outside and off man coverage. The Panthers offense totaled 1,444 yards after the catch last season. That was last in the league by more than 150 yards. Their yak per completion was also the lowest in the league by a distance. Johnson's presence alone should dramatically improve that number. For Bryce Young, not only will he have someone who can turn short throws into big gains, but he'll also be given wider windows to hit on those short throws. Even the better starting cornerbacks in the NFL respect Johnson's explosiveness. You see that here against Trevarius Ward, the all-pro cornerback of the San Francisco 49ers. Ward begins to play in off-man coverage but gains further depth once the play begins. He knows Johnson can run any route and has the pure speed to run by him, so he has to respect that at the beginning of the play. That threat is what gave Johnson time and space when he caught the ball underneath. Ward arrives fast, but Johnson felt him coming and again set himself up to gain depth before turning the corner outside. He used the defender's momentum against him to gain 20 yards. Nobody on the Panthers last year makes that play. To counter this play, you must cut it off at source.
force. That means pressing Johnson with more aggressive coverage and alignments. But Johnson isn't just fast and quick. He understands how to run routes and he understands how to release from the line of scrimmage against press coverage. We see him use his speed to set up the same curl route here against the Jaguars press man alignment. Johnson closes the space to the defender and makes a hard jab step with his right foot. That gets the defensive back's full body weight onto his extended left leg for a split second. In that split second, Johnson advances past his outside shoulder. The receiver swipes his inside arm down to prevent the defender from pushing him off of his route. The cornerback thinks he's in a good position now, so he whips his eyes back towards the quarterback in the pocket. That puts Johnson in his blind spot. Johnson stops on a dime while the defender's momentum carries him upfield. He's wide open for the first down reception. Johnson very quickly created a safe window for his quarterback to escape the shadow of his own end zone. That's invaluable. He's 5'10 and 183 pounds, but Johnson is a physical receiver who plays bigger than his listed size. That allows him to beat tight coverage and create windows in tight spaces. On this play against the Arizona Cardinals, the defender plays Johnson's hesitation release well. He's in a good position at this point, but Johnson doesn't panic. He initiates contact first by extending his upfield hand to the chest of the cornerback. He gets as tight as he can into the body of the cornerback from there before using that inside arm to push back towards the near pylon. After Johnson got into the defender's body, he thought he was in control so he looked back for the ball coming from the backfield. That puts Johnson in his blind spot for a split second. That was all he needed to create a window of separation before extending to catch the ball away from his body in front of the defender. Johnson can score from any position on the field. He scored 5 touchdowns in 13 games last season despite playing with Kenny Pickett, Mitchell Trubisky and Mason Rudolph. Bryce Young is a far superior talented quarterback to each of those players. This touchdown against the Patriots last season captures just how talented Johnson is. The Patriots rotate into a cover zero blitz just as the play begins. That leaves Johnson working one on one at the top of the screen on the narrow side of the field. Johnson is releasing towards the outside shoulder of the cornerback who is bailing out rather than trying to jam him at the line of scrimmage. Johnson's angled release widened the cornerback so he could easily cross his face to get inside leverage. At this point of the play, he is wide open on the dig route. Trubisky should throw the ball to the green square and let Johnson run through the catch point before continuing to the end zone across the field but he doesn't. Instead, he holds the ball, which forces Johnson to adjust his route. Johnson does a great job of tracking the ball through the air so that he cuts in front of the defensive back and makes a catch in the end zone. Those are subtle elements of being a wide receiver that often go unnoticed. On this play against the Rams, Johnson runs a comeback route, but the cornerback covering him plays it perfectly. His coverage is so good that he's actually the favourite to break on the ball ahead of the receiver from here. Johnson recognises this and re-accelerates after coming out of his break before reaching to catch the ball away from his body. He won the ball from a position where he should have been fighting to just break up the catch point. Considering this is what Jonathan Mingo's ball skills looked like last season, the upgrade here for the Panthers is almost immeasurable. It's also a big reason why you shouldn't get hung up on the negative plays that Johnson has. First off, his drops are overstated, but secondly, he offsets them by making plays that most receivers don't. For this play against the Indianapolis Colts, we're going to see Johnson beat a cornerback who has a full leverage advantage against him. Johnson reaches this stage of his route and he wants to break sharply to the sideline outside, but there's a safety over the top and a linebacker to his side of the field as well, so the cornerback is able to stay on his outside shoulder throughout the play. If Johnson just goes forward and then tries to turn outside, he'll be fully blocked off by the cornerback. So instead, he works an opening. The first thing he has to do is bait the defender further upfield so he's level with Johnson rather than slightly behind him. He does that by varying the length of his stride and placing his inside foot as if he's going to break upfield to run a post route. That slows Johnson down slightly while encouraging the cornerback to move upfield at the same speed. Now that the defender is level with Johnson, he can use his hands to swing him upfield as the receiver cuts beneath him towards his sideline. He maintained the timing of the route and created a massive window for his quarterback to throw into from a losing position. Let's rewind that to watch it in full speed so you can see how fluid and fast his movement was, but also appreciate how precise everything that Johnson did was. It was a purposeful meticulous route that gave the offense an outlet that otherwise wouldn't have been there. He also drew a defensive pass interference penalty on this play for good measure. Johnson doesn't need to be schemed open. He doesn't have any deficiencies when it comes to route running or the type of coverage he can beat. The Panthers will be able to line him up in any spot in their offense and ask him to run any route with a reasonable expectation that he will get open. Outside of Adam Thielen, who himself is past his prime, the reasonable expectation for all of the Panthers receivers no matter what situation you put them in last year was that they wouldn't get open. Johnson is fast, precise, naturally comfortable reading the ball in the air and dangerous with the ball in his hands. The Panthers didn't have any of that last year. The Panthers still need to continue to build out their arsenal on offense, but he was a great starting point and came at a great price. 